celery. And this is where I get to sew now. This is physically the same space that I've been sewing in for 15, almost 16 years. However, if you've ever seen any of my behind the scenes work in progress photos on the social medias, you'll, so, you'll notice it looks a little bit different now. <laughs> this was a project that has been literally a year in the making. I started thinking about it last year, pretty much around the time of Wizard World. I've been looking at all of these sewing room makeovers that other people have been doing and really getting inspired. September of last year, I went up to Wisconsin to film The Headmistress. The day that I got home from filming, I got a text from my husband saying that one of the basement windows had sprung a leak. And so I had to completely rearrange all my plans because I had to take care of that side of the basement first. This is so much space, there's honestly no excuse for me to have started to feel like I was getting crowded out of the space. So reorganizing was way overdue, but while I was in that process, I realized all of my furniture is ancient, secondhand, cheap. I was all set right after C2E2 was my plan to really start overhauling this room. And then there was a pandemic. At which point I said, wow, I'm really not going to have any more deadlines now. I can totally gut and redo this room pretty much at my leisure. That was in March. Why didn't that happen in March? Because at the end of that week, I slipped on the stairs and sprained my ankle and couldn't do anything that involved physical anything for a couple of months. So. Once that healed up, I got to work and it was work. <laughs> this is a the house was, was built in 1908. It's an old basement. Any basement you're going to get uh, efflorescence and discoloration. And that was starting to come through, even though it was behind that coating stuff, I could still see it there. And so I had this white, white waterproofing paint that I had used on the other side of the basement when I took care of where the window was leaking and all of the stuff that was there. There was some patching and I repainted the floor. I didn't need it to be fully finished in that way of, wow, you would not even know this room is in a basement. I just wanted it to be a pleasant environment to work in. So I accomplished that. And then I got to work with furniture that is intended for the space and some other little touches that you will see as our tour commences. First stop on our tour is the desk. You have, guys have no idea how excited I am to have a desk where I can have a workhorse machine, serger, and a computer embroidery machine all set up at the same time. I had a Souter desk that had been our computer desk from 25 years ago. Souter furniture, I am not gonna knock it. It absolutely serves a purpose. 25 years and three moves is not that purpose. Wall o notions and tools with two pegboards and in between this wonderful thread rack given to me by the lovely Arturo. The, the sign you see up there that it, that it belongs to my zombie Tinkerbell costume. Hair clip. I always need a hair clip down here because I get down here and go, oh, it's hot or my hair's in my way. I want to put it up. So all the thread, some embroidery threads, bobbins, clock. Hello, Goldie. That's Goldie the Gold. Goldie the Gold is a Beanie Babies moray eel, but she was purchased when I was very active in Stargate SG-1 fandom, and I said, that looks like a Gwawuld symbiote. So she was my cute little Beanie symbiote that I took to GateCon a couple of times. Lots of embroidery thread. Must always have lip balm. Bobbins. Thread, cone thread holder in case I need it. I don't know if the hem thingy is going to live there. I haven't 100% decided yet. Yes, that's my real license plate from when I lived in Ohio. My little red car was called Satine. After, of course, Satine and Moulin Rouge. Oh, hey, hello. Serger thread that is slightly askew. Serger thread. Sorted tools and knickknacks that used to be shoved in trays under the cubbies in the old desk and I was always hunting for where things were or they were in little drawers. 
Hello, Melker. The sign was part of my uh, costume presentation when my husband and I did Tree Mass and Cassia at Chicago TARDIS a couple of years ago. That is an extension cord that goes along those pipes and along the wall and behind those curtains, which I'll explain momentarily, that's under the stairs to a power strip that I have velcroed to the wall over there because this end of the room has all the electricity. My dress forms, Millie and Molly. Millie is the antique one named after the uh, 50s, 60s comic, Millie the model, and also after my grandmother, Mildred. And then Molly, which is kind of my bog standard adjustable dress form that I got at Hancock Fabrics about 23 or four years ago long time. Anyway, she's seen better days and I might treat myself to a professional dress form one of these days. This cabinet was here when we moved in. I'm sure it, they used it for their laundry stuff. I painted it blue. You can see it was this yellow color before. I've got spray paint and glue and dye and stuff to do with ironing. I don't know how to drill into concrete. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not going to deal with that. So there's places where there's like half an inch of the plywood that is attached to the wall for the drop ceiling to be suspended from. That is the place where I can put any screws or anything. My former cutting table was a small drop leaf kitchen table that I literally rescued out of the dumpster at my old apartment. So you'll see, we've upgraded just a little. I had seen and drooled over these tables that people had made from cube organizers with plywood on top. And I said, I need to do that. And I did a lot of hemming and hawing about which thing to use, what kind of thing to put on the top, whether to do the cork tiles on the top to have a pinnable surface. This right here, by the way, is one of the first things I have sewn in this room. It is a cushion for a bench upstairs that I made four years ago. I have all this stuff organized in here and it makes me so happy. So I'm not gonna go through and like catalog what's in every single one of these little cube drawers, but I'm gonna do a couple of highlights. Of course, I've got the usual, all these little jobbies. Your collapsible drawers. This one has corset stuff and some plastic mesh things. I already had these little drawer organizers. It turned out fit very well. Um, they're I've got a couple places that I've got things in these smaller and they're just the photo boxes. That binder is my swatch book. And then I will put a link to these uh, magazine organizers only because I had to do a little hunting for them, find them to find magazine organizers that are not too tall for 11 inch cube organizers. Uh, these are, they call them book bins, but they're just um, kind of almost like horizontal magazine filers, they were with the kids' school stuff at Target, and that's where all of my bigger patterns are. A few books, obviously most of my books still live up in the library, mostly because a lot of them are too tall for these cubes. This side is mostly patterns, and these boxes I would like to show you, they're big sew boxes, and they are, after quite a lot of hunting, just about the perfect solution for patterns. These are file boxes that are meant to have like letter size files in them, you know, so that they'd be facing this way. But since they're just the seven inches wide, because they're only meant to have a, f a couple of files in them, they are perfect for commercial patterns. They are slightly longer at about 12 inches than the depth of one of these cubbies. But you can see the cubbies, some of them are open in the back. So I can leave that to stick out a little bit in the back and it works out perfectly. I haven't labeled everything yet or probably 100% finalized all of the things, but basically I can find everything and it makes me happy. This very handy work surface with a cute little skirt around it is a sink. It's a working sink with working spigots on it. I bought this pre-finished shelf at Menards a number of years ago to put over the top so I'd have more work surface, but I can still use the sink, which is old and has a washboard in it and amuses me. So I have a good slop sink 
Now this little skirt that I've got going around it, which was inspired by the skirting on con tables, was one of my major aesthetic upgrades for this space that I really wanted to make because underneath the sink looks like that. Along the same line, this curtain around this square chunk in the corner, the square chunk in the corner is a space that is underneath the landing by our side door. So these stairs where you can see this angle, these are the stairs that go up to our first floor from the side door. One, one of your clues that most of my building skills were learned in the set shops of various small theaters is that all these things that were open under the stairs and were constantly raining dust and stuff on me have been covered with foam board and duct tape. This bit of the wall is foam board and duct tape that has been painted. And underneath the stairs, you've got that space. I've got the shop back in there right now because I still want to do some patching and painting in there. But so the stripes are just so much nicer to look at. My bulletin board that I could keep notes and things on for stuff in progress. Nothing on it yet, but give me a little time. And now we come to one of my very favorite brainstorms about this space, which is my curtain divider. To understand why the curtain divider is here, we will open the curtain divider and show you what's behind it. A boiler from the 1960s, the chimney for said boiler, my water heater, the rest of my messy basement, including, by the way, that's where my fabric stash lives. That's part of the reason my workspace can be so clean. This is so much nicer to look at. I got this flexible curtain track for a very reasonable price. This is the same principle as the stuff that costs quite a bit more that is made of aluminum and is much heavier, which made me nervous that it would not work on my drop ceiling. And I got this stuff. I could cut it with a hacksaw, make it the length I needed. I actually had to get from a different site these little clamps that I could just clamp it onto the track, onto the, the frame of the drop ceiling. So if you have a drop ceiling and you need to do a divider, this, this is the solution. And because of the height of the ceiling, I just bought three very inexpensive shower curtains. So this is my view now when I sew and I don't look over and see a 50 year old boiler. My floor situation possibly a work in progress. I will probably end up getting more anti-fatigue mats, but in the meantime, I had this fake Victorian rug that used to be under our dining room table until a couple of years ago when we got a new dining room set and it has a trestle table, so having a rug underneath doesn't work anymore. And then under the cutting table, I happened to, to have these EVA puzzle mats that I had gotten at the thrift store a few years ago intending to possibly use them for an armor build at some point, which hasn't happened, and therefore they became useful for this. Um, mostly I needed them there because I needed to level the table because this is an old basement and the concrete floor is not particularly level. I also put these little furniture feet under each corner of each organizer. If you have a floor where you might want to use those shelves and move them around, I would definitely recommend putting the furniture feet on. These are the same kind that I have on this stool, but I can tip it up so you can see them a little better. They're very inexpensive. They're under $2 a pack and you just tap them in with a hammer. So the nitty gritty. This entire process I spent in the neighborhood of $850 on. Part of that was all new furniture. Some of it was the curtain system. So that to some people is nothing. To others, it's a serious chunk of change. And there are some things I spent a little bit more on, such as the pattern boxes, which were a little bit pricier than I would want to spend for something like that. And you can get something similar for cheaper, but I really liked the aesthetic. I liked the fact that they're recycled. So I spent a little bit more there. The, sh the curtains for the divider, I literally bought the cheapest shower curtains I could find that I could get three that would match, that would fit in with my color scheme. Um, there were some that I liked better, but I just got a little cheap there. I used the most inexpensive cube organizers, the ones that are made by Closet Made, 
and marketed at various big box stores under different names, including these are the ones were called Designer's Edge at Menards. They also have them at Target, Walmart under different names. They are all actually made by Closet Made. They're the same thing. Um, I could have spent a little more on that and gotten a, bit, a little bit better quality because I'm not going to lie, this is kind of cheap particle board and it's not going to stand up to abuse. So it's a good thing I don't abuse my cutting table, but it's not something that I'm going to expect to be able to move more than once, but again, I'm not planning to move. So I could cut corners there. It also made things the exact dimensions that I wanted because some of the better made ones are also different, are also larger. My cutting table top, by the way, is, uh, this is, I got a Sande plywood, which is kind of a middling priced plywood and got it cut to size at Home Depot. I happen to own an orbital sander and have the ability to take it out to my garage and sand the bejeebers out of it so that the edges would be pretty smooth. If you do not have that option, if you live in an apartment, if you don't have the tools and don't want to spend hours and hours and hours hand sanding, I would recommend going with a pre-finished panel. Um, they usually have what's called, it's, it's MDF, it's medium density fiber board that a lot of your better flat pack furniture is made out of and it will have a melamine sealed coating on it. And even though you'll have a raw edge when they cut it to size, you can get a tape that you actually apply with just a household iron and it heat seals to the edges of the thing so that you've got a nice clean white or faux wood finish or whatever the melamine is finish edge. And that will give you a smooth tabletop even though I went with the most inexpensive option in a lot of cases, there are ways to spend less money. And I also was doing just a huge amount of stuff. And it's, especially if you're dealing with a room that you're not, you know, already trying to make look less like a basement, then you've got a little bit of a head start there. So that's it. That's my workroom. I am unbelievably happy to be able to be sewing again, to be in this big, spacious, organized, light-filled room that maybe sometime soon I will not feel completely appalled to con consider filming some content in. Certainly won't be embarrassed to take in progress pictures in. So this is the place. Welcome to my workroom. If it has inspired you, if it has given you ideas or thoughts of what you might want to do with your space, or if you have any questions beyond what I might have answered, everything that I have purchased, I will put links in the description so that you can find them if you want the exact same thing. Or hopefully I've given you some ideas for what you can search for. If you have any questions, of course, absolutely leave a comment. And I guess that's it. I'm going to go sew some more. And until next time, bye-bye. Things that are required for the house but I don't necessarily want to look at.